Oh my gosh, you guys. I just had one of the most epic days of my life. I was presented with an amazing opportunity. Something I've wanted to do since 2005, since I was a teenager. No things are mainly plants on this channel. That's pretty much the tone here. Sometimes pets and animals, but not very often. But uh, this isn't a plant video. One of my other, or I should say actually probably even bigger passion than plants has always been fish. Since I was a kid, aquariums, I, I was way more into aquariums and fish before I got into plants. That can be a whole different video though. I actually wanna jump right into this. Now that I've already rambled for who knows how long. This morning, got up, five o'clock in the morning, went off to the airport, went to the Georgia Aquarium. Just a quick one day trip, there and back the same day, and absolutely worth it. Walk into this place, it has amazing, huge, like light panels up on the wall, and it's just, it's, it was so cool. I was in absolute awe walking into this place. Just the lights, it was that, I, I'm very into just lights and color, so that alone, the aesthetic, amazing. But of course, I was most excited about the fish. That's why I was there, right? So, for starters, went off into the tropical area. I think it was called like Diver's Den or Tropical. So, I don't even remember. Some of the stuff's got a blur. It's been a pretty long day. It starts off with some pretty big tanks with some decent sized fish in there. Pretty typical fish for the aquarium hobby. Some angels and antheas, dotty backs, file fish, tile fish, actually, and you know, things like that. To me, I was like, this is cool, but I wanna see the stuff that I don't get to see all the time. Not that I see big tanks like this all the time, but you know what I mean. Jellyfish. Oh, I love jellyfish. They're not easy to keep in captivity. So it's really cool to see them in these big displays where the water is moving them in just the right way and you can see that there's all the different plankton and whatnot in the water for them to feed on. The way the lights go through them, it's beautiful. Now, this really big tank with the bright blue background, the lights weren't changing colors, but it gave a really good perception of how long the tentacles were on these guys. And they get even longer than this. These are small jellies. But the other tank, this was lit up very well, a nice dark background. I was just mesmerized by the movement. I actually had jellyfish back in the day. I had some live rock that was spawning it out. They start off almost like a coral polyp and they get to a certain size and they break free and it kept doing it over and over and over again. So eventually I tried to make my own like jellyfish type aquarium, wasn't easy. And I managed to keep them alive for about, I'd say it was like a month and a half. Wasn't a super long time, but considering it was before you could even get online and get these jellyfish aquariums and things, not too bad. I don't know if it's something I'm gonna be trying again, but it would be amazing because there's something mesmerizing about the jellyfish. They're like a living lava lamp. They're just so soothing, so relaxing, so tranquil. I absolutely love them, but it really is. It's hard work to keep those tanks running properly and to keep them thriving. Okay, jellyfish are cool and all, but just down the hall from there, humongous, gigantic reef tank. Goes over the head a little bit, has waves that come down that you can watch spilling above you their time to music which I actually didn't even notice because I was still like just so in the moment but it was a really cool tank gigantic absolutely stunning had a, a, what I believe were all aquacultured corals in there lots of monoporas the fish was a lot of tangs lamingi tangs unicorn tangs yellow tangs fish that you see in the hobby but I wouldn't be surprised if they obtain them because people get them and then they outgrow their tanks and don't know what to do with them things that probably really shouldn't be sold by I don't know if that's how they got them. That's just speculation. Kind of like Pakus probably shouldn't be sold when people don't have tanks big enough to take care of them. But that's a whole separate thing. Look at how beautiful this is though. As far as I know, the corals in here are all live and just stunning. There were a lot of things I skipped over, things that just, when you've been in the hobby for a certain amount of time, it's, there's some things where like, okay, cool, anemones, all right, neat, they've got a tank with, some, you know, seahorses in it. I mean, the seahorses are cool and everything, but the things I really, really was most excited to see were things that are very uncommon and rare. Things that most people don't get to see in person. And that's why after seeing the tropical stuff, the reefs and whatnot, went on and did the behind the seas tour. Now, if you ever go to the aquarium, highly recommend. 15 bucks, and they actually take you behind the scenes. They take you 
above the tanks, you get to see the processes, the operations, the filtrations, and all that fun stuff. And it is limited. They don't take you behind every enclosure, but it's still well worth it. it they did ask to not record too much because they want people to go and do the tour, not just see them on, like, YouTube. So I respected that. But, you know, there were some highlights, uh, one in particular that I'll get to in a few minutes, that were really cool. Then they take you over above that massive reef tank from just looking at, and get to see the big bins that filled up with water, and like I said, I didn't film too much of that, but I did notice, I was like, hey, that's cool, these tanks are lit by Max Specs, which is a brand of LED lights, it's like, that's pretty impressive. And there's sunlight, or um, what are they called? You know, the, like, translucent panels in the ceiling. I'm sorry, it's been a long day. I, I, I don't remember what they're called. It's fine. You know what I'm talking about. Light can come through the ceiling as well. And they have an area where you can walk over where they have some mangroves sticking up. What I, I assume is supposed to be a filtration area, like a bioactive filtration area, sort of like a super refugium for the tank below. There's some sharks down there. I think there's a blue diamond ray. I think there's maybe epilute sharks and zebra sharks perhaps down there. Uh, there was a really pretty Moorish idol that caught my eye and a little wall made of what looked like the Walt Smith rock that you used to get from, like, Petco. That was funny because I edged part of my garden with a bunch of old live rock that looked kind of like that. And after that went on to the filtration room, and I'm actually, I'm not necessarily doing things in order, because like I said, I don't want to ruin the tour for people who are possibly going to do this, but just, like, some highlights here. They show the filtration, or part of the filtration for the aquarium, massive sand filters, gigantic pumps, huge protein skimmers. It was like a warehouse full of these, and this was like one of multiple filter rooms. And a fairly typical setup, I think, for what gigantic aquariums have going on. And those pumps, these gigantic pumps and filters that they were showing us, the tour guide told us that these things pump over six million gallons per hour, which is insanity. And it makes sense though, because, skipping ahead here, to my favorite part, the reason I wanted to go here, the Ocean Voyager. This is, I believe, a six million plus gallon aquarium, size of a football field, houses four whale sharks, tons of fish. There's groupers, there's stingrays, there's turtles, manta rays. Unbelievable. We went up above because it was, you know, behind the scenes and got to watch these guys swimming around from above and get a different perspective of the tank itself. You can see where the tunnel is and explain how one side's 20 feet deep, the other side's 30 feet deep, and uh, it was just mind-blowing. Standing just a few feet away from these whale sharks and these manta rays, and look at how close they are. They're right there. It was nuts being able to actually look them in the eye. It was an experience I'm never, ever going to forget. There really isn't a way for me to explain how big these fish are and how big this enclosure is because the video just it doesn't do it justice this also had skylights in there to let natural sunlight in for everything i mean it's still filtered through whatever that material's made of but it's just a different perspective than looking at them through the glass or acrylic whatever their panels are made out of what was even better what really brought it home was that we just happened to be there just a few minutes before feeding time the tour guide said, hey, do you guys want to hang out and watch? And we were like, of course, duh, who wouldn't want to see that? So we got to watch the process of them being fed, which was really neat how they have them trained. So each shark like has a specific place to go to. And I don't remember, I think maybe the little bulls at the end of the poles may have been different colors for them. I'm not sure. But getting to see them slowly pull out this krill for them. And the whole time I was thinking, I was like, man, these people who are feeding these sharks must have some guns on them because you're doing this every single day pulling yourself around with this long pole. I mean, it had a hefty sized bowl on the end of it that they're using to drop the krill out in front of the whale sharks. Pretty cool. They have it all worked out. There was another person down on the, like, kind of the other end who was feeding the stingrays at the same time, and I was, like, enamored with the whale sharks. Of course, I didn't film that, but that way, you know, everything is swarming around the whale sharks while they're eating. Like I said, I'm not going to go into the specifics because they asked us not to. And I have skipped over a lot from the tour out of respect for the aquarium and their wishes, but it was really neat. I highly suggest if you go to the aquarium, it's 15 bucks. Being able to watch them from above, seeing them just a few feet away from you, not through glass, just right there, right beside you, looking right into the eyes of the whale sharks when they go by you, is a life-changing experience for me. It's something that I am going to cherish forever. It's one of the reasons I'm excited to make this video because I'll always be able to look back at it and go through the process, even like the timing and everything. It was just, 
It was amazing. This is something I am never going to forget. All right, now that the tour is over, I actually went to the Ocean Voyager, but I kind of want to save that for last because for me, that was the peak of the entire thing. The whole reason I've always wanted to go to the Georgia Aquarium. So let's move on to the freshwater stuff. I didn't do a ton of filming in there because a lot of it was just like, stuff you see at Petco, but not all of it. They have a massive African cichlid tank in here, a gorgeous tank full of rainbow fish. It looks like there's some turquoise, maybe some basmanis. I can't remember off the top of my head, but absolutely packed full, planted really well and gorgeous. They had fish swimming overhead. It looks like gar and pike. There was some sturgeon in there. I don't think I got those on video, but of course I figured y'all want to see the piranhas. Everybody loves piranhas. It's a nice piranha tank. <laughs> And they were swimming around fairly actively. A lot of times you see piranha setups, they're just kind of drifting there and not just sort of in like robo mode and kind of a bummer, but they seem to be, you know, doing okay in there. And the last of the tropical aquarium type tanks that really caught my eye was the discus tank. Again, not a super rare fish, but they're beautiful. They were nice, big, Looked like there was probably some pairing up and spotting going on in there because there was some aggression. Maybe there's some babies coming up on the way. That's pretty cool for them. I didn't pay attention to the sign, so I don't know. Maybe some snake skins and pigeon bloods. I don't know. I was just like, wow, they're pretty. They're they're nice, big, pretty, healthy fish. The tank was planted up nicely. It was just pretty. And moving on into the cold water area, they had some really neat pot-bellied seahorses. That wasn't what I was most excited about. The other animal that I really wanted to see while I was at the aquarium were the leafy sea dragons. Or actually, no, I think these are weedy sea dragons. Either way, very, very hard to get to focus on camera, by the way. They had a whole bunch of them in here. They're absolutely beautiful. They said that these were, at one point when they first got them in, the most expensive fish to feed in the entire aquarium because their diet was so specific that the shrimp, the brine shrimp, that like the freshly hatched brine shrimp, had to be brought in from Australia. I guess because they wouldn't take brine shrimp being hatched there at the aquarium. So they had to get them transitioned over, but that's nuts. They had to bring that all the way from Australia, which probably on a daily basis, freshly hatched brine and shrimp, that would have to be very fresh and very constant. I would imagine that probably costs an absolute fortune. And then now, of course, the most expensive thing to feed is going to be whale sharks. So onto the Ocean Voyager. As you're walking down this hallway, they had these viewing windows set up where you can see into portions of the tank get a good look. There's a beautiful Goliath grouper in here. I think that that's what that is. Sea turtle in there. I think his name was like Hank or something like that. I honestly don't remember. But he's a green sea turtle. The only creature in there that's not a fish. And then from there into the tunnel. Submerged below everything. Stingrays. Manta rays. Just crazy fish swimming around right above your head. When the whale sharks would pass over, like I said before, it doesn't show on camera how big these are. And these are technically babies. They get 40 feet, 41 feet maybe long, and I think they said maybe these were 18 feet. Uh, I don't, don't fact check me for that sort of thing, because it's, like I said, been a long day and I don't really remember. What I remember is I asked, are they going to breed because there's males and females, and they said they're not to sexual maturity yet. So there's, they still have plenty of growing left to do on them. Okay, the tunnel was cool, but I'm still, I wanted to keep moving because I wanted to get to the place the things you see in the pictures, the spot where the huge wall is where you can see everything, but it wasn't there yet. First, on one side they had like a really long touch tank that looked like it had a cleaner shrimp in it. I didn't really care about that because, I mean, I have those in my fish tank here. I just stick my hand in my tank and get, get it cleaned whenever I want to. So that's behind this giant window looking through right here where it looks like you're kind of in a shipwreck looking at everything. Just a different perspective. It was really, really neat. But still, I wanted to keep going, come around the corner, and boom, look at how big this is. Absolutely insane. My jaw dropped and I was just like, I don't even know where to start with this. I just kind of stood there sort of in shock kind of recording things for a little bit. And some of this footage I'm just going to put up there, you see, with the people in it and everything. So you can see like a perspective of how big this is, getting a look into really just a small part of the overall aquarium. The aquarium, if you remember from looking at it above just like a minute or two ago, way bigger than this. This is just a little viewing area they have set up where the whale sharks and the manta rays and everything come through and you can sit back. They had some steps set up here where you can sit and relax. The music was very relaxing. 
I could have spent the entire day here, no problem. And believe me, I really, really want to. I was in there for a really long time. Overall, when I left the aquarium, I had over 700 video clips, which I'm surely not using all of them. I'm sure tons of them are out of focus because I wasn't even really paying attention half the time. I wanted to see what was right in front of me. Because you got to take in the moment. They did a really good job of blending things together. So when you're down low and looking at the rock work, you can see that they have like queen angels in there and it gives you more of a reefy perspective. Whereas if you look up, there's these schools of very large fish, more of what you would see in kind of an open ocean setting. Then when the manta rays come in with the whale sharks and that turtle, it just didn't even feel real. It felt like something that I would only ever imagine seeing that was CGI. I couldn't believe it was actually right in front of my face. Watching the manta rays go up and swirl and spin, there's something very majestic about that. And the stingrays, sharks and stingrays, like, that's my thing. I absolutely love them. I don't even know all the different types that they had in there. I know there was a really pretty eagle ray in there. I don't know if I got footage of it. And lots of uh, bat rays, or cow nose rays, I should say. But I love them because they always kind of have like a smile on their face. There's probably so much footage of this. I'm just gonna cut off real quick, put some music in, sit back and enjoy how beautiful this is. guys tell me that that was not epic 
like I said before, I could have hung out in here all day. I absolutely love Atlanta. It's a very diverse city. The people were very friendly. And just a side observation, everybody's shoe game was on point. I don't even notice something like that. But anyways, had to head home. Interesting weather. Got to see some snow up in the sky while it was raining down below in Atlanta. And, well, here I am now. Home, tired but like still wired from how cool this was. The Atlanta Aquarium is the largest aquarium in the Western Hemisphere, the second largest in the entire world. I think they said it has around 10 million gallons of water. It's just epic, massive. And there were rumors floating around while I was there that they're working on another million gallon enclosure for like predatory sharks. I don't know if that's true or not. I need to need to fix that. What what happened there? Such an amazing opportunity. This was a father-son trip. My dad at the last minute said, Hey, I need to go on another flight to keep like his A-list status with one of the airlines. And he said, instead of just like taking a quick trip over somewhere close by, let's do this. And I was like, absolutely, yes, have to do this. This is an opportunity I'm not going to say no to. Not just because of the aquarium, but like the, the bonding experience, the father-son time. Obviously, that was a big part of why this was such an amazing experience also. I'm going to be eternally grateful for this. I, I can't even begin to explain how lucky I feel to have been able to go and do this. Obviously, I would very much prefer to be able to see these whale sharks and manta rays in the wild in their natural habitat but it was an opportunity I just couldn't say no to. Apparently the weather wasn't great while I was gone because I came home and the power was off in here. The backup air pump was running, which is great. However, my check valves haven't come in yet. I don't know why I ordered them like a month ago. I was gonna put check valves back here on these filters because when the power goes off, the water goes down, siphons back through the pumps, and then guess what happens? The waste washes back into the water. So I've already done a 50% water change in here and uh, things are actually clearing up an awful lot from what it was about 45 minutes ago, really. That's neither here nor there. I can talk about that in, like, the regular vlog. Hey, but thanks for coming along on the ride with me. I tried to get straight to the point. Didn't want to ramble too much. Most just wanted to highlight these things. I have a whole entire separate highlight reel, which I probably should have said at the beginning of this video. But, hey, you know, maybe you hung out to the end. That's awesome. Thank you. Love you. Appreciate it. That highlight reel will have been out. And or will be out at some point. I'm sure by the time this video comes out, I will have been posting stuff on Instagram and Snapchat and whatnot, so people probably will have already figured out what I've been up to. If there's anything I forgot to include in this video, then I'll put it out in a separate video. It'll be very lightly edited compared to this one. But with the highlight reel, I wanted that to be out where you don't see the reflections and whatnot, where it's a more immersive type video, just of things that I thought were really pretty. I'm sure it'll be repetitive from some of the stuff that's in here. That's all right. It'll also be shorter for those of you who don't like long videos. I gotta go to bed, though. I am exhilarated and exhausted at the same time. The fun feeling. Like I mentioned before, you know, if you've been on my social media, then you will have seen things. So follow me at Tropical Plant Party on Instagram. I have everything linked down below. Follow me and I'll follow you back. I enjoyed doing that. It's a fun way to communicate with everybody, see everybody's pictures and just connect. I have been meaning to get this piece of plastic fixed for like two weeks. When the video's on, I see it so much better. I'm going to get on that tomorrow morning probably. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to be editing videos for days. I'm not going to be doing anything like that. I have so much I want to go through and look at. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. It helps the channel a lot. It means a lot to me. It lets me know I've been doing a good job, so thank you for that. I really do truly appreciate it. And subscribe as well, because I upload multiple times a week. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. Like I said, I truly hope everybody's doing well, that life is just beautiful and everything is fantastic. And as always, most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye. <laughs>